<laughs> okay, so I am going to go ahead and film it like this and hope that it works this time because I'm filming for a second time a whole video that I lost. So hi guys, it's Tanya. Hope everything is going well with you. I wanted to make a video about this subject. It was requested by one of my viewers and actually another viewer popped in um, just a few days ago and requested information about the same topic. So the topic is being a black person in Israel, being a black woman in Israel specifically, being a black person in Israel more generically. And um, it was a good question. And I don't know, it's surprising that I haven't actually made a video about this subject yet. <laughs> but shout out to my two viewers i'm going to put your names here thank you for the request and tell you the truth I actually recorded this video a few days ago and lost the footage so i was not able to upload it my intention was to have it uploaded already but you know i have my notebook with my notes and so i'm able to refilm the video and here you go there's a segment that I will include of a friend of mine who lives here and is also black. She is from Sudan and she had some really interesting input from her perspective that I wanted to share with you as well. So be looking for that at the end of the video. Okay, so being black in Israel, I'm gonna be using my notes, okay? So if I look down, that's why. So I'm gonna hit several topics for you. Um, I will start out by telling you just about the um, the black people here, the black communities who are in Israel, um, and then some of what I've observed of their experiences, and then my experience afterward. Okay, so first, let me point out that there are several different black communities here. There are people who are here who are citizens who are black. There are people who are here um, as refugees. Many of them are Sudanese, Eritrean. You have some Nigerians who are here and people from other African nations who may not be considered technically refugees by the government, but they've come here to escape hardship of some sort in their country, whether that's war or economic difficulty. And so they may not fit specifically, technically under the status of refugee, but they've come here seeking asylum of some sort. So let me give you a little bit of background. Let me give you a little bit of history. You have the establishment of the state of Israel. You have Jewish people coming from all over the world. The main infrastructure that was established at the time was established by Jews from Europe, Ashkenazi Jews. However, there's a wide range of Jews, um, not all Ashkenazi. Many people erroneously assume that only the white-skinned people that they see, particularly in America or in the UK, as Jews are like what all Jewish people are, but there are many, many different Jewish people around the world, different um, ethnicities, so to speak, but all ethnically <laughs> Jewish. So you have, with the founding of the state, you have the establishment of the state in 1948 by primarily by Ashkenazi Jews, um, building a Jewish, a um, European type infrastructure here that had already been established in Europe through underground movements, through different organizations that were growing in Europe prior to the establishment of the state. When they get here, they start to bring Jewish people back to the land from around the world. And some of the countries that they came from were Middle Eastern countries and Northern African countries. So you have Jews coming from Algeria, Morocco, um, Tunisia, Iraq, Yemen, all of these countries where people are darker, more Middle Eastern, or um, darker Mediterranean or Northern African in complexion. They faced what they considered to be discrimination immediately when they got here. They were not necessarily poor in the countries that they came from, some were, some weren't, but they were definitely considered second-class citizens. They were all coming from predominantly Islamic countries. And so their status was not very high in the countries that they came from. Um, so when they got here, their interactions with the Jewish people here who were from Europe was challenging. And for many of them, they immediately felt discriminated against and looked at as second class again. Um, and they attributed that to their cultural differences and they were called black or the dark ones since they were darker in skin tone. 
so much so that they actually even formed, some people formed a Black Panthers movement in the 70s. Um, they really identified with this whole idea of of kind of being the other. And there were struggles, they're, they're known as Sephardic Jews. There were struggles to find equality and um, they, they experienced challenges when they first got here. So this whole idea of being black um, isn't necessarily specifically, um, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Lest you panic, Passover, the last day of Passover is beginning now, and that's the siren indicating it. The Jews who were here, who were Sephardic, did feel discriminated against to a certain extent, and they attributed that to being Sephardic and darker and not seen as having, uh, being savvy within the European context and way of doing things. Okay, so the whole idea of being black isn't necessarily, <laughs> you know, specifically just for people like me with skin this dark. People who are um, darker than European have adopted that appellation, you know, over the course of the history of this country. Okay, but I know the, the questions that I got were specifically about people of African descent. So that's where I'm going. So in the 80s and 90s, you get a wave of immigration from Ethiopia. You get the Ethiopian Jews who are coming in and they primarily come from rural contexts. They are known, and these are broad sweeping generalizations, but they are generally known as a more gentle type culture, more um, docile much more docile than the people who had come and established the state and the ones who were here already. Israel is much, it's very much a kind of fight for what you get type of environment. You have to, just like if you're from any big city in the Western world, well, just like if you're from um, New York, for instance, I don't know, maybe London's this way too, I don't know, but in New York, where I grew up, you kind of got to make your own way. And that's just how life is. You work hard for the money, you work for what you get, you fight for it in some context. And that's what it's like here. Like going grocery shopping is a mental process. You have to put your game face on and just be ready. Getting on the bus, whatever. It takes effort. And so that was kind of what it was like for the Ethiopians getting here. This is what they're faced with and that was not culturally what they were coming from. So many of them were just immediately thrust into a very challenging situation. They came from a context that was not urban by and large. They came from a rural context. They were not um, fully prepared for this culture. And unfortunately, there were lowered expectations of them. People didn't expect them to necessarily um, succeed. People didn't all work hard to help them succeed. I mean, some people did, so you know, don't get me wrong and do not be angry if you're Israeli and you're listening to this. Um, but what you see is a general kind of um, situation where the people who are coming in are not expected even to really prosper and thrive in society. So you get a kind of second class that's established. Uh -huh. That's strong language, but you get this context where um, assimilation is not easy, and the reality here is that assimilation is part of the context for Jews who immigrate. And it wasn't easy for them. The youth, the Ethiopian youth today, are in quite an interesting position. They're third, some of them, it's third generation. And you see them, um, my observation is you see them really struggling to find a sense of self. Who am I, um, you know, am I gonna hold on to my Ethiopian heritage and culture while at the same time embracing my Israeliness? Um, I see beautiful, beautiful people. The, the women are gorgeous, um, who seem to be trying to identify who they are. Am I going to be this beautiful black woman or am I going to fit into the mold of modern, um, Israeli society, which they see as a bit different than who and what they are. So my observation is that the women, at least, um, are still trying to find out who they are and being okay with like this, being okay with this. Um, they don't lighten their skin and things like that, but there just seems to be an identity 
crisis, a bit of a struggle in identifying self and finding a sense of validation and real deep pride in self. If I'm misinterpreting that, and you are Ethiopian and you are Israeli, please forgive me. Um, that's been, that's just been my observation. In addition to the Ethiopians who are citizens, you have other groups of Africans who are here, and those groups are by and large, unfortunately, viewed with suspicion. Um, the reason is because many of them have come in either walking across or coming in with tour groups or coming as individuals on tour and have just gone underground and not left. Um, many of them are seeking refuge. They're from war-torn countries, they're from countries where they're being massacred, um, abused, raped, organs harvested, horrible, horrible things. So you have people fleeing here because this is the most safe um, democracy in the area. People can say what they want about Israel and have their gripes and beefs with Israel, but the reality is when people are seeking refuge or someplace to flee from any place in the region, um, including Northern Africa, they come here. So there are many Sudanese, there are Nigerians, there are Eritreans, they have some Somalis here, many, many Africans here. Um, some reports say in the hundreds of thousands, uh, some reports say in the tens of thousands. There are many people here. There's not a really strong infrastructure that's been developed to handle um, the situation. And so some of the complaints and um, concerns have to do with things like taking up homes, putting a strain on the economy, um, bringing violence, lots of thugs hanging out in the streets, um, prostitution, uh, jobs being taken. Um, if this sounds familiar to you, if you're American, it should because this is the same debate and discussion that's going on regarding illegal immigration from Central and South America right now. Same discussion. A little bit more nuanced, but pretty much the same discussion. So the experience of Africans here can be quite challenging. Now, I'm saying Africans specifically because the situation that I'm talking about is in regard to African immigrants, or African um, refugees, or those who have come and are hiding out. And there are large communities of people in this context, in this grouping. You have um, you have people who are walking across the Sinai, trying to get into the country, fleeing horrible situations in their home countries. Some of them are kidnapped from their home countries and taken to the Sinai, where they're then held for ransom. And if their families in their home countries don't pay the ransom, then people are being murdered, or some of them are having their organs harvested, kidneys, various organs, and then dumped at the border with Israel, and the Israeli soldiers bring them in. They don't necessarily have a great system in place to help these people once they're here and stabilized, um, but this has been happening, and it's not a new situation. It's been happening for several years now. So you find quite a vast group of people here, and they're, you know, without jobs. They're kind of the some. A lot of the men are on the street, just kind of hanging out all day long, which does lead to fighting and violence. Many of the women are having children, and some of them are married. Some of them are not. There's just a really there, there's a situation that needs to be addressed. Um, I can talk about that another time if you'd like. Many people have established themselves and gotten settled and gotten lives here. Some have refugee status, some have started over, and that's that's great. Um, it's not an easy place to live just as far as um, having to push for what you get. So the fact that there are people who have been able to settle down and, and get established and live here is, I think, a success story for those people. Some have been sent back to their countries, like when Southern Sudan was established, many people were sent back to South Sudan, and that is actually quite challenging because the country is just growing and developing, and there are all kinds of, you know, that's a situation in and of itself. Some have been um, sent on from here to European countries or to the U.S. or to Canada. Now, my experience as an African-American woman, um, I don't use that term a whole lot, I just say black because once you leave the United States it becomes much easier to just say black. <laughs> just keeping it real. Um, in fact, people find it quite odd that we use that term, African-American. They're like, 
know what exactly is that and why do you say it so my experience coming here as a black woman when I first came in 1995 in graduate school was that I was immediately recognizable I stood out people wanted to talk to me um, the names that I heard immediately but the, the my first experience was oh my sweet chocolate <laughs> when I went to the old city um, my skin color was the first thing that defined me when people would see it they would immediately latch onto it and I would have to run the gauntlet in fact Eric and I became friends because I needed someone to walk with me to Shaban shop who you saw on my Easter video to change money because if I didn't have Eric with me I would get Hello Beautiful, My Sweet Chocolate, Janet Jackson, Also Beautiful, um, I Love You, So I Like the Black, just all of this. So <laughs> I learned to kind of tune it out, brown sugar, I learned to tune it out, but having a guy with me made it easier. I did not have really many negative experiences besides that kind of thing, which some people consider negative, some don't. Um, but in recent years, um, I have been faced with the expectations of prostitution. I've had a couple of occasions where people have approached me. One guy approached me and invited me up to his place and wanted to offer me tea and coffee. Why don't we sit and talk? And finally, I was like, I don't think my husband would like that. Um, I had another guy walk alongside me on the street and ask if I had a card, kind of under his breath. Bottom line is I do get a lot of attention. I'm black and I'm dark as well, so I get a lot of attention. Um, and people don't automatically assume that I'm a tourist. Now, when I'm walking around with my kids and they have on backpacks, it obviously looks like we live here. When I'm with Eric, people are like, because they can't tell if he's Jewish or not. And by looking at me, you can see that I'm not Ethiopian, I'm not Sudanese, so people don't quite know where to package me, where to place me. A lot of people assume that I'm Nigerian and they will tell me to my face, you are Nigeria. And I will say, no, I am America. <laughs> and when I go by shops, my reality is that I live the tourist experience and um, all black tourist women get this. If you've been here and you are a black woman, tell me if you heard that, especially if you were at the shoot at the market. Janet Jackson, come into my shop. Oh, brown sugar, so beautiful. Oh, I like the black. Like, this is just what we hear. The reality is that I'm seen as exotic. I'm seen as different. And so because of that, I get a lot of attention. I get a lot of attention from men. Um, they don't always speak, but they will often look. Some will speak kind of in these kind of murmur type voices as I go by. When I'm with Eric, they don't. Um, they'll stare. And so I have had to get used to stares, a lot of stares, a lot of stares. And listen, don't like just travel around the world if you don't want to get stared at because it happens. Like if you're black and you don't want to get looked at, stay at home. <laughs> because it will happen. It happens to me all of the time. And that's just kind of a part of my reality that I've had to learn to accept. I'll turn around and smile. I'll say hi. Um, I often have my camera, which brings by even more stares. But you just learn to deal with it. I have had a pretty positive experience. Um, I haven't had people treat me badly because I'm dark or because I'm black. I haven't dealt with the situation that you know I grew up with, the colorism situation where if you're darker, you're treated differently and you have less advantages, um, and all of those kinds of things. And listen, I grew up as a dark skin girl in Brooklyn, New York. I know, I know what I'm talking about. But um, I don't experience that here, and that could be because I'm not immersed in a part of the black community here. Um, I would imagine it probably happens within black communities here because if you are black and live any place that's been impacted by colonialism where white people were the ones who were in authority for a period of time, then generally lighter skin or being white, closer to white was an advantage. And so that kind of gets embedded into the psyche of the black people. And those people then have to deal with that belief. Um, until they can break free of it or until the individuals can break free of it. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a part of life in the Ethiopian community, but I don't know. I know Ethiopia was colonized by Italy. I don't know if that was, if that carried over here or not, but I do know that there's a real struggle to be like the whiter skinned Israelis who are around them. So I'm gonna share my friend's experience with you. She is Sudanese. 
And she um, has a different experience than me because her context is different than mine. So I want you to hear what she has to say. Yay! Hi. Hi. Hey guys, Hello. this is Tanya. This is my friend Yamima. I told you that I would try and see if I could get a friend to um, talk about this topic, and that is about being black in Israel and what our experience is like. So Yamima is my friend, <laughs> and she has some interesting experiences as well. She's been living here for Almost eight years. Okay, almost eight years. And so she has some really interesting um, things to share. So I wrote down some questions to ask her about. And um, yay, I'm looking forward to her answers. So first of all, Yamima, where are you from? I'm originally from Spain. Okay. And what parts of Israel have you lived in? Uh, I've lived in north and south, south, but I've mostly lived north. And I just moved to Jerusalem about... A little more than half a year ago. Okay. How have you found people respond to you or treat you being a black woman? <laughs> well, that's a good question because uh, everybody's different mm -hmm. in a way. But uh, where I lived when I lived north, because I lived in an Arab quarter, let's say, mostly Arab village. So they kind of treat me with my color, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. uh, you're black, you're different, you're separated, you're that. Mm -hmm. But then when they really get to know me, when they really, they really got to know me, then their opinion changed. Mm -hmm. They started treating me for my personality, for who I am. Mm -hmm. So the color it mattered less. But then when they see a, another black person, they, the whole thing starts over again. Okay. So basically they just need to know the person and then they can change. Um, there's perspective. Mm -hmm. But in, in Jerusalem, because it's kind of an international city, you have you have it mixed, like different cultures, different languages, different people. So mm -hmm. I kind of feel like I'm, I blend in a lot more. Okay. Like I feel part of the community and everything. Okay, so you don't feel like you stand out as much in Jerusalem? No, no. Okay. Yeah, I really feel part of the nation around here and stuff. And people, whoever sees me think I'm American or, <laughs> or I'm from Uganda or Nigeria or something. <laughs> You're Nigerian! <laughs> yeah. How have you found, <laughs> I mentioned this earlier in my video, y'all remember, or maybe I'll show this later, I don't know, but about <laughs> men, how men treat me here. How do you find that men I treat I find you? that men think black women are the most attractive women <laughs> in the world. <laughs> No, seriously, like they just see a black woman, they're like, wow, they get lost. And it's like, <laughs> they can't not see a black woman and not say anything or just mm -hmm. come and give her a comment or just try to get her attention. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just, I think they think we're treasure. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it's beautiful. Anyway, when she's walking around, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. Like, so, <laughs> what do the men say to you? <laughs> what you used to say when you go to a store? There's one, this one guy, I think every time he sees a black woman, a black lady or whatever, he keeps saying, Hey, Jenna Jackson! <laughs> Jenna Jackson! So, everybody Jenna Jackson to him. Everybody! Every black, and every black. And one time, we're like four different black girls. <laughs> And then one just said, it's like, huh, yeah, there's this guy who calls me black, and um, Johnny Jackson. And then the other one's like, me too, me too, and all of us. Was that that day? We were, I think I'm going to put a picture of that day here, because that was so funny. We were all like, he did it to me too, he did it to me too. <laughs> it's insane. Do you feel that people behave badly in general toward black people here, or? Sometimes there is, there is racism. Mm -hmm. uh, like, sometimes, um... I don't know, it's just because when you're black, it kind of separates you from everyone else. Mm -hmm. if, if it doesn't matter where you're from, it's, as, soon as, as soon as they see your color, that's it, that they, they kind of judge you already, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of sometimes it's hard to be black, <laughs> I mm -hmm. admit it, <laughs> because sometimes it's just like you don't feel related or you just feel separated and people are just like, like let's say I've been a few times to places that people just keep throwing words to me that mm. <laughs> you know I cannot repeat them or I cannot really? think about them. Yeah, wow. and like calling you names. Yeah, calling me that. names and talking about my color and like how God was mistaken to create yeah. this color. Yeah, here in Israel. Yeah, here in Israel. Oh yeah, goodness. and uh, and stuff like this. But um, it's stuff that you don't get used to it. But there's nothing you can do about it sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but there's also good, you know, not just saying well, that it's not always yeah. bad, but there's also good that mm -hmm. people that there I have most of my good friends are white. <laughs> <laughs> most of the people here are white. <laughs> yeah. It's true. I mean, 90% or 99% of the people are white. But um, yeah, and the, the hard times that I was like, I'm the only white person. Like when I went to school, mm -hmm. my grade, like we had like about five different cl different um, classes and mm -hmm. I was the only black person in all of them. Why? <laughs> yeah, in a way yeah. it can be an honor because yeah. they're like, oh, they want to learn. Hey, can I touch your hair? Can I touch your skin? <laughs> can I do that? Mm -hmm. But then also at the same time, I was like, oh, come on, you guys. It's right. enough. <laughs> right. It's like you're carrying the responsibility yeah. of being yeah. the black boy. <laughs> the black yeah. 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 I understand this. this is, my high school is very similar. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to tell us about what your experience has been like being black in Israel? Because you were here in high school, yeah. Right? So you went through school here, and not just as an adult. Mm -hmm. Now you're as an adult working and stuff. But um, to be <laughs> like, there's a lot of good things that happened uh, mm -hmm. here. So it's pretty much the good is taken over the bad. Okay. So uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's just all we have to do is just blend in and just mm -hmm. I don't know be ourselves because. Because they judge you, at the end of the day, they judge you for who you are, not for your color. Mm. I mean, they can be, <laughs> they can be a, black, a white person, that doesn't, doesn't mean they're good, they're better than us. You right. Know? So, um, I'm not being racist or anything. No, but, it's true. <laughs> no, it's true. true. You just, no, I think everyone just needs to learn to judge the people, like, mm -hmm. for their personality, for who they are now, because... Because I'm different color than I'm different, mm -hmm. you know. And I did tell a few of them, I was like, hey, I have this exactly the same things you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't know any better than I am, or I'm not better, any better than you are. Right. <laughs> so thank you for taking the time. Sure, it was fun. Yay. And if you have any questions, you can post them in the comment section below. And I will reply. And she will reply. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you later, guys. Bye. Bye. So I don't know if this was helpful or not, I hope it was, but that has been my experience here. I haven't had negative experiences. Um, and I, I do think though that there are black people here, many black people here who have had bad experiences. My reality is that I came here with a job, a good job, a nice home, um, all of my needs met. And so life hasn't been difficult for me here and I haven't had to rely on people or systems to help me out and to take care of me. Um, I had a housing provided, I have a job, my husband has a job, my kids are in a good school. Those things are, are not a struggle for us and so our experience is different. Now it is challenging not speaking Hebrew as well as we should um, and I do feel that when I go out with my kids and they end up having to translate for me somewhere. If you have any specific questions for me, you can put them in the comment section below and as always, thanks for watching, guys. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. Share my video. Tell your friends about me. If you have any specific questions or if you want to know any more things or specific things, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, if you'd like me to do another video that's more expansive on this subject, I'd be happy to. Give me some specific things that you want to know. Okay? Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.